to get more into the strong style thing, which could be very good for him, could be very bad. I don't, I haven't quite decided yet. <laughs> Why, hello there, everyone. My name is Alyssa, and welcome back to the Squiddy's YouTube channel. So, today we are going to be reviewing nights 13 and 14 of the G1 Climax. So, we're down to the wire. We're, 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 we're winding down. We're winding down here now. We're towards the end. Um, so, yeah, um, if you don't know what the G1 is, and you haven't watched any of my other G1 videos, I will be sure to put them all in little cards above. So, um, as I always say, I try to do one A block and one B block per review. So, yeah, I guess should we get into the A block? Um, so the first match we have on A block today is Jeff, is Jeff Cobb versus Tomohiro Ishii. Very strong style based. Um, obviously though, you're kind of gonna... You, I feel like they're both more of strong style wrestlers. So that's a bit natural, even though Jeff Cobb can cl is vi clearly very agile and can do a lot of things that are fucking nuts for him to even be thinking of doing. Um, more strong style based because that's kind of more so what I feel like they gear towards. Um... Ishii is so strong, like, he kept picking up Jeff Cobb like he was literally nothing. And I was like, that dude is so fucking big, how are you doing that? Like, it made no sense to me at all. Zero, none, zilch. Jeff Cobb was just tossing Ishii around though too, like he was nothing. Like, they are both so insanely strong. And it really made for a very good fast-paced match, even though it was more strong style based. Which, you know what? I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good match. Definitely one of the better matches of the G1. I would definitely made me want to say I want to see it again. And I gave this match, for that sole purpose, a 5. And also, Jeff Cobb won. So we love that for Jeff Cobb. Sad Ishii couldn't get at least one other win in. But, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. So our next match on our list is Jay White versus Yujiro Takahashi. This one's gonna be a bit interesting. Um... So, Jay actually didn't even come out this match in his gear. He just came out in, like, pumas with, like, some sweatpants and a shirt. And I was just kind of like, uh, what? But, could be shit-talking Yujiro. Don't know what it is. Very comedy-based, though. For some strange reason. Like, it was very comedy-based. For, uh, I mean, they kept running around the ring and stuff, and it was very comedy based. For, I, I don't really know why though either, because it's not like neither of them can do nothing at all, so it doesn't really make sense. But Jay, but it really just shows how versatile Jay is, and what I, because I think I've briefly said this before, but I really want to see Jay with a different move set. I think it could be very interesting to see what he can actually do versus what he does with his heel moveset. A lot of pins in this match. Again, I don't know. 
um, very pin, like a lot of pins. There was no not pinning at all, trust me. Uh, they definitely got in their series of pins in this match. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I gave this match a 2.5. Wasn't that impressed with it. Thought, especially Jay, could do a lot better. Um, and, you know, it was definitely not one of my favorite matches I've ever seen of Jay. Um, but Jay won, so that's cool. We love that for Jay. So the third match we have on the A Block card is Will Ospreay versus Tai Chi. Again, more so strong style based. Interestingly enough, because well, I guess Tai Chi is more so. I guess Tai Chi is more of a strong style wrestler, so it does kind of make sense in that regard, but. And it seems like, like I said in another video, Osprey is definitely trying to get more into the strong style thing, which could be very good for him, could be very bad. I don't, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, Osprey's athleticism, though, too, was definitely shown in this match. He did his flips and stuff. You know, it was cool. Fine. He actually wasn't as extra with it, though. With it this time, too. Which was very surprising and a little weird. But, um, you know, I don't know. Um, and Tai Chi was actually selling for him very well. I was kind of surprised. I didn't really think... Especially someone like Tai Chi, I didn't really think he was going to sell that well for Osprey because, I mean, I don't know how many people actually like Osprey behind the scenes. Because, you know, Osprey is definitely a, an interesting person, <laughs> to say the least. I gave this match a three. It was solid. Nothing too bad about it. It was kind of just there. Um, I mean, I mean, what else can I say? Um, Osprey won, so that's cool for him. Um, yeah. Don't really know what else to say about the match. So our fourth match on this card is. Kota Bushi versus Minoru Suzuki. So it was again more strong style based. Um, kinda not surprising because that's more of Suzuki style. I mean, Abushi can kinda do pretty much all of it. You know, I've said that a few times now. He is very versatile. Which can either be very good or very bad because also, when I feel like when you're that versatile, sometimes you don't... I feel like a lot of people just need to hone one skill and keep that skill. Because it works... I feel like sometimes it works a lot better. Look at someone like Zack Sabre. It works very well for him. Um, but also, I mean... I feel like honing one skill and then maybe honing another isn't a bad idea, but I think learning little bits and pieces of it all doesn't really do much for you, because it's like, well, why the fuck can't you do this other thing, but you can do that thing, like, huh? <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel like being versatile can be good depending on how versatile you actually are, Does that if that makes sense. Um... Ibushi's kicks, so yo, those are some other kicks that look like they hurt like a bitch. Like, especially in this match, I don't know why, but they looked like they hurt so bad. For probably no reason, too, they just looked like they did. And I was like, damn, I don't want to get kicked like that. The fuck? I look like that hurts. Fuck that shit. Um... Kept a good pace, 
wasn't mad at it. Thought it was fine. Nothing wrong with it to me. Um, yeah, uh, I gave this match a three. Um, like I, another again mediocre slash middle match. Wasn't too good. Wasn't too bad. Suzuki's a bit older, so he's not gonna. I mean, even though Suzuki's still fantastic. He is getting a little older, so he's not going to be able to put on as good of a match as he was five years ago, even. You know? Um, and the Bushi won. Good for him, I guess. Um, so our main event of the evening was Kazuchika Okada versus Shingo Takagi. I was kind of surprised. Okay, so it was more of a strong style based match, which not that surprising because again, Okada is someone that literally can do pretty much anything. Like Okada, I feel like can definitely be considered a little more versatile than Ibushi. Hands down, Okada, love that man, so good. Nothing wrong with him. I think everything he does is flawless. I genuinely think he has the perfect move set for his character and it really works well for him. Um yeah. But um it was more strong style based. Not that surprising cuz Okada can still do it even though I feel like he's again more of a high flying kind of guy. Um, but Shingo is more strong style, so he would probably end up going more towards Shingo's style of wrestling in that way. In a match like this. Um, Shingo's strength. Y'all. He's insane. Shingo is so good. Like, what the fuck, bruh? He is so good. Like, I can't. I love Shingo. Let's put that out there right now. Shingo is a GOAT, hands down. He picked up Okada like that man was literally nothing. Even though Okada's like seven feet tall. Probably not actually seven feet tall, but he looks like it. Um, and it's definitely bigger in a weird way than Shingo. Like, it was, like, it's crazy the shit some of them can do. Okada's drop kicks. I always mention this, but man, Okada's drop kicks are so nice and done. Like, oh my god, I the way Okada does his drop kicks. I still want to know how he does it, cause what the fuck? Like, bruh, what the fuck? Um, good pace. Thought it was fine. Nothing wrong with it. I thought that they definitely kept it up. Um, it is, this isn't maybe a match I would want to see outside of the G1. I would say in the G1, it's fine. But it's not like a title match or a big match that I would want to see. Okada did kind of seem to get a little more low energy again for this match was kind of surprised because of the last match he had, but he, he did seem to kind of get a little low energy again. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe something happened backstage. It could be a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I gave this match a 3.5 because I thought overall it was fairly solid. Nothing wrong with it necessarily. I was okay with it. I definitely think I can still see better from both of them, but I don't think I can see. But I don't think that this match is one that entirely works. Um, which is why I said I don't really think it's a match I would want to see outside of G One. But Okada won. So that's good for Okada. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say about that one. So, let's move on to 
B block now. Our first match for B block is Yoshihashi versus Zack Sabre Jr. Um, you had a very this match had a very slow start. Like the the problem is, is Yoshihashi can barely do anything, and Zack does so much. <laughs> So it's like this just does not work at all. Zach is very high energy, and then Yoshihashi's like not. So it just don't really work, and I don't even think I would want to see this in the G one again. Like this isn't even a match that I would want to see, regardless of where it would be. Um, it was honestly overall kind of boring i didn't really like it it wasn't for me maybe there are people out there that did like it i wasn't a fan zach tried to keep it up though he tried that poor man tried Just... zach can only do so much though my man zach can only do so much and gato again treat zach better Please, he deserves so much better than this. <laughs> My man, Zach, deserves, deserves a lot better. Okay, yeah. Um, I gave this match a two. Because Zach tried here. Okay, he tried. And that's all you can ask from him. Um, but Zach won, too. So, we love that, especially being such a big Zack Sabre fan. Um, I think he's really good. I've always enjoyed him. I haven't, I have never had any Zack Sabre problems. And they're like, what, what do you need he's done? But, yeah, um, that's all I had to say about that. So, our next match is Toriano versus Kenta. Um, this match again was kind of stupid. I didn't really like it. Was it for me? Um, very slow start yet again. I don't know what it is with them tonight and slowly, just slow ass starts. Um, but Yano tried to keep it up. And Kenta tried to do comedy, I guess. Even though Kenta's fucking shit at everything. So, you know, Kenta doesn't even do actual shit well. So why the hell is he gonna do comedy well? Yano tried here. Yano really tried. <sighs> Poor Yano. Poor Yano. Even though it was definitely supposed to be a comedy match, there was like zero legit comedy at all nothing was funny nothing was like laughable it was just really bad <laughs> like i did not enjoy it. it was not for me so again i gave it a two um they both kind of tried so there's that And Kenta won, so that's cool for him, I guess. Our next match is Sonata versus Juice Robinson. This is an interesting one, I do have to say. Um, Sonata's agility really got to shine through in this match because of Juice's moveset. And, you know, that man, for how big he is, is so agile. Well, it's crazy. Hands down, it's fucking nuts. Sonata is literally insane. Let's just put it that way. Um, Juice can actually kind of keep up with him, too. I was kind of surprised. I was like waiting for Juice to, like, slow down and, like, not even remotely try to work with him sometimes. 
But no, like he kept up and he went for it. I've been, again, I've been very impressed with Juice. This G1 too. Ever since he came back, he's been so good. This new character just re vamped something in him like it re-energized him in some way i don't know what it did but it did it and you know what good for him it was a good pace nothing wrong with it i didn't hate it i thought it was fairly good mediocre though a little bit to me which is why i gave it a 3.5 because I thought even though it was a good match, it wasn't up there, up there for me. It was kind of more so mediocre. And it wasn't going to be one of my favorite matches. Um, I would definitely maybe want to see it again in the G1. I don't know if I want to see, I don't know if I would want to see this as like a title match or something. I don't think I would go that far with it. But I would definitely say if it's another G1 match or something, I wouldn't mind it. It was fine to me. Nothing wrong with it. And Sonata won! Sonata's getting towards the end here. And we love that for him. Sonata better make it to the finals. Better. Or I'm gonna fight Gato. Gato, I'm gonna fight you if Sonata don't get to the finals. Sonata better get to the finals, Gato. I mean, you are gonna have some words. Hear me? Hear me, Gato? Um. Anyway, so our next match is Hiroki Goto versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. I don't know why they've been doing this with to Tanahashi, this G1. I don't know why. Why have y'all just been giving him such bad matchups? Why? Poor Tanahashi. My man's Tanahashi deserves so much better. Just give Tanahashi better, please. I mean, it was an okay pace, though. I didn't mind the pace of it that much, honestly. For Tanahashi being older and everything, it was fine, you know, in that way. I understand why they did do it, because Goto can kind of go slower or go faster. Goto, even though he's not good, can do some stuff that you want, that you need him to do. Um, and they actually kind of seem to have a little bit of chemistry in the ring together, which I was also a little surprised about. Um, because it's not like Goto's that good and, you know. And obviously Tanahashi's a fucking legend, like, you know, like I was a little surprised. Not gonna lie, but, cool. And, I mean, Goto put in some effort for this, too. Like, I try to give Goto credit where he deserves credit. Like, he did put in some effort here. But, like I was just saying, Tanahashi is a literal fucking legend. So, if you don't put in some effort when you're up against Tanahashi, you're just going to look like a fucking dumbass. Like, it's true. You are. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, I gave this match a three. Mediocre. Not too good. Not too bad. Definitely don't know if it's a match that I would want to see again. Maybe in the G1. But I don't think I would want to see it as, like, a title match. Or a big match of some sort at all. I don't really think I would want to see it. Um... And Goto won, so I guess good for Goto, even though I don't understand why Goto's beating Tanahashi. But that's just me! Um, so we're on to our main event now, which is Tetsuya Naito versus Evil. Now, 
Okay. I would just start this off with saying, why the hell, when we didn't want it the first time, or even like it the first time, are you going to do it again, Gato? We all hate it the first one. Evil fucking sucks. Why are you giving it to us again? Why? I just want to know. Please tell me. I, I mean, but I guess it had an okay start. Like, it wasn't too bad for a start. I don't know. Like, it wasn't too bad. But Evil just got progressively slower as the match went on. And I was like, well, that's Evil for ya. This match was just so bad. I didn't like it at all. The first match they had wasn't good. I don't understand why they're doing another one. They they have literally no chemistry in the ring either. In this way. Like, at all. They really don't. And I don't really get why they're doing it again. But, if they want to do it, sure, I guess. I don't know. It's stupid, though. And they just need to not. Um, I gave this match a 2.5 because Naito tried. Naito definitely tried to keep it up and he definitely tried to do some stuff. But it just didn't work because Evil just doesn't get it. <clears throat> he doesn't. And Evil won. Evil beat Naito. So we're probably going to have to see a third one. Because evil beat him. Fuck you, Gato. I'm so tired of you. Alright, on that note, it's time to end this video. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know this far in who you guys think are going to the finals um and let me know what your favorite matches have been so far i personally think that my favorite is still gonna be sonata versus zack saber it's great we loved it masterpiece um but yeah if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I think I already said that, but oh well. Um, and if you like my face, be sure to subscribe. And if what I upload is not important to you, be sure to hit the notification bell. Which should be somewhere by my TV or by my BTS poster, potentially. Um, but yeah! That's it for today. Bye-bye.